Hey guys, what's up? No, that doesn't sound right. I... What's up, you beautiful bastards? No, my wife said I can't say that either. I don't know. This whole like intro thing is hard. Everything sounds so insincere and forced. I'm not sure how to do this. Acting! Hey guys, what's up? So today I'm going to review a classic from the year 1989, a movie that's really near and dear to my heart, The Wizard. Jeez. I love the power glove. It's so bad. So the synopsis is a boy and his brother run away from home and hitch cross country with a girl, with the help of a girl, they meet to compete in the ultimate video game championship. That's half right, cause this movie is very dark and very adult and has some very serious undertones and themes and subtext. And it's not something you'd expect from a family film uh, made in 1989. So the movie is directed by Todd Holland. That's Todd Holland, not Tom Holland. Uh, it was written by David Chrisholm and stars uh, the very popular from the Wonder Years, uh, Fred Savage as uh, the main protagonist, but as well, it also stars Luke Edwards playing his younger half-brother, uh, a very young Christian Slater, and Bo Bridges who plays the dad in the film. And he does a really phenomenal job as the dad. Uh, all the casting is pretty much dead on. I mean, Fred Savage has been shown time and again to be a phenomenal actor, even as a child actor. You didn't even care about him when you had the chance. All you care about is yourself. And even though Luke Edwards, who plays his younger half-brother, has really no lines in the entire film, he just kind of stares in the distance, there's still something interesting about that and he does he does it in a way where like you could actually believe that there's something wrong with this kid uh, just by a glance on how he talks how he looks and how he acts because he kind of just stands there a lot and he's very introverted and quiet also jenny lewis who plays Haley in the film uh, ends up being not necessarily a love interest for fred savage but a friend interest and it's kind of a coming of age story in a way it's not centered around a coming of age story by any means but it has those themes between her relationship with Fred Savage's character and her character. I know what you were gonna do and you could just forget about it. There is no way I am not kissing a boy. There's also uh, Sam McMurray's in this for a really short amount of time. If you've ever seen him, he plays like every 80s guy ever. Like he has a very distinguished look about him. He's in a, he's in a ton of stuff. Uh, you'd recognize him if you see him as that guy. Look, he just, he just picks up his little lunch pill. What is in that thing? And off he goes. I mean, he can go anywhere. Downtown, the canyon, to the river. He doesn't go to the river. He never even goes near the river. OK, he stays away from the river. But I'm telling you, anytime. I mean, he can just pick up and go. And then, of course, uh, the villain of the film is played by Will Seltzer. He plays uh, Putnam, who's a, a bounty hunter. He's a bounty hunter, essentially, for, for lost kids. He finds lost kids and returns them to her parents. Uh, Mr. Woods, what? excuse me, just so you know, I make my money by bringing kids in, and I don't make it if someone else brings a kid in first. Uh... The acting's pretty stellar on all fronts. The casting's very well. Like I said, it's meant to be a family-oriented film. I've already mentioned this, but it's kind of dark. So without going into spoiler territory, there's an event that's revealed to why Fred Savage's younger brother, Jimmy, is like the way he is. For two years, he's been introverted. He doesn't talk. He is constantly uh, running away to California or wants to run away to California. He just picks up his lunch pail and he walks. In fact, that's the opening of the film is him walking in the middle of the desert trying to get to California and you're not, you're, you don't know why. You're given subtle hints and clues throughout the film about something that happened near water, something that happened to his twin sister, and it's a big reveal. So I don't want to spoil what happens because it's actually a pretty powerful moment uh, amongst the kids in the film that reveals why uh, the character Jimmy is this way. And that's like where it stems. It's the whole thing stems from a, a family dynamic. Fred Savage's character, Corey, really wants them to be a family again. And he really cares about his half brother and what he's gone through. And he really wants him to be brought back into the family unit. And because his brother has shown so little progress over the last three years over this trauma that he's witnessed, again, where I don't want to spoil it. Um, they talk about putting him in an institution. And Corey doesn't want that. He wants his brother to be part of 
the family and obviously whatever happened caused a huge divide in the family dynamic because his dad and his older brother are both really dealing with it everyone's dealing with it in their own way it's the pain of loss and how we each deal with loss and how coming together from that pain is very important in a family and using each other as a support structure what to pick up the rules you always do this Corey, come on no dad will you listen to me what you want to see that happen huh you want to see him put jimmy in a home Corey. Fine, Dad. Just because he's our half brother, it doesn't matter, right? Cool. So what ends up happening is Gory overhears that his brother's going to be put into a home. So, so in a desperate attempt, uh, he goes to the hospital where they where they have his younger brother, his younger half brother, and he decides to take him to California. Like that's the goal. He's like, if we get, to, he doesn't know what he's going to do when he gets there, but he just knows that him constantly wanting to go to California, maybe this will help him. So I, I can't believe that nobody else in the film, not one parent, thought to go to California after clearly that's what he's been saying the whole time. <laughs> that's where he wants to go. California, California. So any, anyway, they end up meeting the zany characters and it becomes a, a road trip and a somewhat coming of age story. It's more of a road trip though, because it's not about Fred Savage becoming a man. It's just about family and about taking care of the people around you. And obviously there are some shenanigans that ensues um, and stuff like that. But during this road trip, Fred Savage finds out that his little brother, his little half brother is really good at video games. You got 50,000 on Double Dragon? And that's when this whole movie becomes kind of an advertisement for Nintendo. Uh, not so much for a few select games. There are multiple scenes in there, especially the ending scene where this is clearly a Nintendo product movie. Like, there's a great scene with Christian Slater where he pulls out the Nintendo and starts playing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in the hotel room. Doesn't take much intelligence to play that game, does it? You should know. And the dad, he leaves and comes back and the dad starts playing the video games and is all into it. What the hell are you doing? I don't believe this. I got the scroll weapon and I almost beat Mega Turtle at the end of level three. You got the scroll weapon? Yeah. He's losing his mind. <laughs> It's a really funny ongoing, it's not necessarily a gag, but an ongoing theme. It's a really fun theme, especially in 1989. There weren't a lot of Nintendo things that weren't the video games. You, oops, keep it in the mic. So you do have, like, of course, you know, you have the Nintendo system and all the games, but then you had like the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, which was geared toward younger audiences. Of course, that was four at the time, what do I know? Uh, it was a great show, but like that was really it in terms of what you could see uh, like like obviously there were a lot of animated things that they experimented on in those days but none of them really took off to see nintendo be pl placed so prominently on a pedestal in this film and be a huge commercial war it was great i mean that's what got kids into the theater right was this was a nintendo game it was a nintendo tournament the whole thing was based off video armageddon which was this huge tournament in southern california and once Fred Savage sees how good his brother is at video games, he decides to try to enter that tournament because he thinks that if he enters his brother in the tournament and he wins, they won't place him in a institution because, you know, look at him, he's really good at video games. Who would do that? You know, the mind of a child, right? It's pure and simple. This was eSports before eSports. And by the way, this, this contest, Video Armageddon, that took place at Universal Studios in California, predates the Nintendo World Championships. The Nintendo World Championships the Nintendo World Championships started in 1990. This movie was filmed in 1989. So it predates that. So in a way, this movie, Slack, this movie was the very first eSport-esque film that you could ever see. Like this, this was the incarnation of what eSports would be in 2020 or 2021. And it's incredible to see that. I mean, the movie obviously has its place in pop culture. There's the famous scene with Lucas who talks about the power glove and it's it's been a meme and people have said it and it's been all over the place. I love the power glove. It's so bad. I mean, if you even look at the poster, you see things like Zelda, Donkey Kong, Super Mario Brothers 2, Mario, like a fireball. Like there's all these things to play on the Nintendo popularity that was so big with kids back then. It's, I mean, hell, it still is today, honestly. For a film that's essentially one giant Nintendo commercial, 
toward the end of Act 3 and is also one giant uh, Universal Studios commercial at the end of Act 3 because they get off the ride and do all this crazy stuff. It's a really fun road trip movie with a lot of heart. Um, if I had to rate it, I would actually give it a 9 out of 10 because it's a solid movie uh, that has a really good message and has like a really uplifting message. You know, supporting your family and your loved ones and being with them in their time of grief and getting closure to certain events in your life is very important. And like I said, for a family film that you think is about a kid winning a video game tournament, it has a really deep plot and a very good message. And I think that's so rare in movies nowadays, especially in modern filmmaking, to see this kind of stuff. Like, is it the best movie in the world? Absolutely not. Is it a cute film? Yeah. Is it adorable? Yes. Is it something you, of all ages people can enjoy? Absolutely. Because you know, when I was in, when I was watching this when I was a kid, I had no idea it was this deep. I was just like, what are they going to get to the fireworks factory? That was me, but it, you know, whenever you saw a Nintendo, it was keep your off for Nintendo. When they're talking about Nintendo. There's also um, some hilarious like scenes for, uh, from Jenny Lewis uh, in the casino uh, where the bounty hunter gets caught. It's a, these some great scenes in there. We're too late. He touched my breast. What the hell are you doing? No, I didn't. No, no, I, I didn't touch anything. You can't touch anything. You can't hit the kid. The kid is. What are you? I got a letter of custody for that kid right here in my pocket. What are you doing? Put me down! But it is at its core a road trip movie with a lot of sincere, genuine, heartfelt themes. And if you haven't watched it and you're a Nintendo fan, shame on you. Uh, you should. Even if you missed the Nintendo era or the Super Nintendo era, it's really cool to see a movie that's it's so 80s guys it is so 80s just just the aesthetic alone the music the writing the uh, the curly hair the mullets the bright colors of like the the teenagers that lucas is uh, the teenagers that lucas is friends with uh, really they scream 80s it's really funny of course and probably the most biggest thing about this film is that super mario brothers 3 was coming out to the u.s soon and this was a huge commercial for that as well because it's the final game they play in Video Armageddon in the tournament. So I give you Super Mario Brothers 3! really think even if you didn't grow up in the Nintendo era like you know if you grew up in the GameCube era and the 64 era you're still gonna get a lot of a lot out of it and the fact that it predates the Nintendo World Championship by a year and like kind of predicted where video games would go in 1989 no one no one would have called it no one would have been like oh yeah in 20 years from now in 50 years from now 30 years from now you're gonna have arenas with no no one called it this movie did it first and that's fantastic um, so check it out guys uh, Todd Holland also he did a lot of television stuff after this uh, most notably Malcolm in the Middle stuff so uh, he directed a bunch of uh, Malcolm Malcolm in the Middle episodes and then most recently he did the pilot for the series uh, Mr. Mayor so he's still working today so and if he's if he's watching this uh, Todd thank you so much for your film it's a really cool piece segmented in time for the 80s and it says a lot about uh, gamers at that time and the way people looked at video games and even though it was a giant advertiser for nintendo universal i still had a lot of fun watching it so yep that's it go watch it it's on amazon prime and i think that's that's it i, I don't know how to end these yet sorry jeez i love the power glove it's so bad 